We all do a lot of powerful work all day on our Macs and our hands can be super productive right there uh, with the trackpad, with the keyboard. And so that's where when we look at providing more controls, uh, that's where we want them, right where, your, right where your hands are, right at your fingertips. If you're on the keyboard, you tend to want to stay on the keyboard. If you're on the trackpad or using a mouse, you tend to want to stay on that mouse. And so having your hands on the keyboard and having just, without even lifting your hand, to be able to reach a control just right in front of you, we saw the opportunity with the function key strip being really something that's a throwback to the past and a legacy to instead create an area that was so useful and so powerful and that really provided the controls contextually that were most relevant to what you were doing at any given time. And so when the technology came together with a multi-touch display that we could actually uh, engineer into that space and into this extreme enclosure, uh, you know, our eyes really got, got very wide as to what we, could make, what we could make happen there. The touch bar almost becomes this mutable custom piece of, of hardware. Most of your keys are fixed in position and purpose, but the touch bar is, as a, as a reprogrammable touch surface, anything it needs to be for what you're doing. And suddenly it's a musical instrument where you can use multiple fingers to be doing real-time performance and, and operate not just buttons, but, but sliders and different effects. And I think that really is an idea and a, and a capability that is just going to continue to get better as more and more developers uh, really rethink how they can solve their problem through the framework of, of the touch bar. It surfaces functionality that in the past has been, uh, in a way, hidden behind a menu, but the fact that it can come forward contextually based on exactly what you're doing in that moment really prompts you to, to rediscover the depth of some of your applications and accomplish tasks that you might not have even realized were available to you and now you can do them in so much a faster way. Uh, so there's a really great discoverability element to this, this display that's right at your fingertips. My wife, of course, wasn't able to know that I was uh, using the system, but she must have wondered why I was sending her more emoji because uh, they, were, they were right at my fingertips, you know? Um, so it, it, is things, it is things like that. I do think also some tasks that you do, like navigating through your photos, just become so much quicker. You know, you end up approaching it differently because you just want to move around. You just put your hand down, slide across. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic. At Apple, we build prototypes around all sorts of ideas. So we certainly explored the topic deeply many years ago and had, had working models, um, but decided that it really was a compromise, that for a device uh, that you hold in your hand, like a phone or a tablet, uh, it's very natural to rest your hand on the tablet and, and work that way. We think touch is at its best, and we wanted to build and have built a really deep experience around uh, a multi-touch first user interface. Grafting touch on something that fundamentally was designed around a precise pointer uh, really compromises the experience. When we engineered Touch ID for the phone, um, privacy and security were fundamental. In fact, we'd, we'd had to put capabilities into uh, our custom silicon years before people saw the, the, ever saw the, the iPhone uh, 5S with that capability because we wanted to make sure that we could keep your fingerprint data securely in a secure enclave away from even, even a hacker if they could possibly get access to your phone. And so we've been able to take that same custom silicon, that technology, and build it into a chip that's in the Mac. So you get those same protections and then you get this in really incredibly fast sensor. So when it comes to signing into your Mac, Touch ID for, for payments with Apple Pay, or even fast user switching, they all work here. And I think just as with iOS, as we saw people, other third parties starting to take advantage of this sensor over time to provide kind of security features, we'll see the same kind of roadmap for the Mac. As we built this 13-inch machine and really made the ID both so so tight in X and Y, so dense, so small, we realized in the end we had the perfect 13-inch laptop. And in fact, when we compared it to the MacBook Air, which is so beloved, we saw that we built a machine that was actually uh, thinner, smaller, just as light, and then had all the things that we really, as users, wished we could have in our air, right? It had the retina display that I think once you have one, it's, it's really hard to turn back. Um, you have the fantastic trackpad and then just all the performance. And so we realized for so many MacBook Air uh, potential users, this was the, the right next step for them. And so we were able to create a configuration 
of the 13 inch uh, with, without the touch bar and with uh, just the two ports, which actually is a ton of IO. Phil talked about the incredible capabilities at the event about uh, the Thunderbolt ports. Um, and, and it's sort of the best MacBook Air you could have. And I think a lot of people who wanted a little, a little something more from, from the Air are going to find this the perfect 13 inch machine.